Hello, welcome to Toronto Bible Study. I'm your host, Mike Zampat, and today I want to talk about this uh, video by Frank Turek and his channel, Cross Examined. And uh, I think I've done a few videos about, I mean, I have done a few videos about him already, so in case you haven't seen them, I'm pretty sure that this guy's some kind of Satanist or something, or some kind of Freemason weirdo, you know? So, I mean, that, again, to the Freemasons out there, I love you. I don't hate you, okay? When I say that people like this are Freemasons, I mean that they're, because my theory is that the Freemasons are like uh, a cult organization and that they're being used by the devil to ex uh, to execute his plans, right? And so the people at very high levels in Freemasonry, according to this theory, are Satanists or witches or something like that, and they're doing some kind of magic, okay? So for the average Freemason who doesn't know about that stuff, I would just tell you, I think you should get out of that organization immediately and don't have anything to do with it. If you're a Christian, I would say that, that that participation in that is a sin. Okay, if you disagree, that's fine. But um, if you'd like to discuss it, just put the comments or whatever, just let me know because I can, I'm pretty sure I can show you that Freemasonry is against what we learn in the Bible or what the Bible says for us to do as Christians, okay? But anyway, Frank Turek is a apologist, apologetics guy, whatever, and um, or I think he has a philosophy PhD or something like that. He's like a professor or something. But whatever, he's clearly into some kind of sa satanic deception, okay? Well, let's just listen to this short video he made. And um, I'm just going to point out some things in it. Uh, Frank Turek responds to Bart Ehrman on the use of the word faith. Bart Ehrman is a, um, a scholar. He was a Christian and then he started going to seminary and then he became an atheist. Or supposedly that's the story. And then now he's like basically like an anti-christian shell he goes around like just basically all he does is his whole shtick is to just try to try to cast doubt on the on the new testament and and the and the his, historical value of it or the his, historicity of it as they say and then yeah that's his whole thing and then it's like very it's very like it's very weak scholarship that he uses and stuff he's not very good at at that but people atheists and people like that who are who are dying to dump on christianity they eat it up okay but nah this guy's nothing man and supposedly uh, frank Turek talks about how, oh he's actually a really great scholar at text criticism well you know what i'll give him that he is pretty good at text criticism the text criticism of the Bible is a ridiculous joke in itself. The field itself is ridiculous. Okay. So, and I've talked about that in my, in my video about, um, uh, my two videos about, uh, why we should, why Christians should use the King James Bible. So you can learn more about that there. But I'm just going to talk about this Frank Turek business. The best explanation is a miracle given all the data. To philosophically rule it out in advance is, it is a bias. So with this thing. It is on. a bias. So look at this, oh wait, see how they have the X, the X symbol is a satanic symbol, okay? And the black, white, and red is a thing that a lot of these secret satanists will do in their logos and stuff. Like Alan Parr does it too. And lots of these guys do it. So it's not just in, in Christian Satanists. It's all kinds of Satanists do this stuff. But yeah, black, white, and red. He's got an X symbol there. The cross, the cross examine thing. But it's like an X, right? 
And just now, you, you can see, if you look at this thing, let's just slow it down a little bit. Look at this thing as it yeah. goes by. Let's get a logo. It is a boy. I hate the way this guy talks. But you see X, X, X. It's just X, X, X all the time. Why is that? Is that not a cross? You know? He's first, he's like, oh, it's cross okay. exam. I found this We're on the web cross. for Ask, Ask, Ask. But it's not. It's not a cross. Anyway. So Suri decides that because it said XXX, that she should give me this website. Thanks, Suri. Sir, Siri or whatever. Anyway. So cross-examined, yeah. Clearly, they're showing the signs of the Satanists, okay? Even this weird, like, this weird creepy sound that they have playing, that's just weird, too. It's probably some kind of subliminal thing. You guys are laughing at me, but it's true. This oh, man. No, not subtitles, playback speed. Normal. And Bart Ehrman is probably the top scholar skeptic on the New Testament that you'll find out there. He teaches at UNC Chapel Hill. He's actually a very good scholar when it comes to manuscript evidence. And he says this about... See, see look what he does there. Look what he does there. See, you guys won't believe when me, it comes but... ...to manuscript evidence. And he says... Right there, he's doing that thing. He's doing that. Like, he's doing that. You know what I mean? But it's hard to see, maybe. I don't know if you can see that. So he's doing it there. You can see it there quite. I think it's more clear. This is what they do. This is what they do. I don't care, man. People will say, oh, Mike, what this. are you talking about? It's so dumb. But no, that's exactly what he's doing. He's doing this. This is not a way to point at people. Like, hey, hey, you. Hey, you. Would you ever point at somebody like this? Hey, by the way, Bart Ehrman says some stuff. What? The like, you know? Or even if you're pointing at somebody like, hey, you, hey, you, you wouldn't go like this because that's now you're pointing at two different things. All right. So you wouldn't do that. You would just point with one finger. But he's got two fingers like this and he's got his thumb out. It's like, you know, but that's their little evil eye thing that they do. That's what he's doing. He's straight up doing that. OK, but anyway, it's about the resurrection. You can show historically that people claim they saw Jesus alive afterwards. You can draw the conclusion that they probably believed it. But if you're, you yourself agree that Jesus was raised from the dead, you are saying that was an act of God in history. What you are doing is no longer history, it's faith. All right, now what might you say to Dr. Ehrman here about this? Kind of search for reason. Well, it's not necessarily, it's what we call begging the question. <laughs> In other words, he's trying to say that an historian can't discover if a miracle has occurred. Why not? Because we're supposed to assume that miracles don't occur. Well, the question is, why would you assume that? Right? Why should you assume atheism? Maybe the best explanation is a miracle, given all the data. To philosophically rule it out in advance is it is a bias it is a bias in fact one question you might ask him is when he says what you're doing is no longer history is faith is what do you mean by faith i submit to you that faith and reason are so complementary by there? faith i su submit to you that faith see right there why do you why would you do that i submit to you He's like, he's like, first he goes like this, I submit to you, and then he goes, why? Why would you ever do that? Just talking, like, you're just talking. I submit to you that faith is whatever, but he's doing it because now he's talking about, this is how they do their magic, you know? He's talking about an important thing of the Christian faith, of, the, of our religion, which is faith. And he's, and he's going to start bringing some confusing nonsense about what faith is or whatever. Faith is, what do you mean by faith? 
I submit to you that faith. See, I submit to you that faith. And now, because they, when, when they do this thing, during usually when they're talking and they do this thing, it's because they're saying something that it's like that's the trick, you know? That like because they'll talk a lot of the stuff they'll say is true, right? And then all of a sudden they'll come out with this trick to to confuse the the Christian and or confuse whoever, and then. So that's when they usually pull out their hand signs, okay? So right now he's going to talk about faith. Faith is, what do you mean by faith? I submit to you that faith and reason are complementary. They're not contradictory. Faith and reason are complementary. They're not contradictory. First, what's our definition of faith? Faith is trusting in what you have good reason to believe is true. Faith is trusting in what you have good reason to believe is true. Is that what faith is? <laughs> Does that make any sense? I mean, do we have good reason to think that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Good reason? I mean, it's not like I have good reason to believe that my computer is on. Or uh, I guess, you know, I have good reason to believe that tomorrow the sun will rise. Good reason to believe that Jesus rose from the dead? I don't know. But these apologists, they try to say that, you know. Oh, we have good reason to believe that. We don't, we don't believe it just because we just took God on faith and we just believe what God said. No. We believe it because there's good reasons, there's evidence, there's all kinds of historical evidence, evidence, you know what I mean? And all their, all their, the research they've done, these scholars and stuff, you know what I mean? That's like this guy. Now, the average scholar who does that stuff, I'm sure they're fine, whatever, they're just confused, you know? But this guy's clearly like some kind of Satanist or something, you know? But anyway. Let's look at the faith. Oh, wait, let's, let's listen for a bit. Then I'll, I'll show you the, the definition of faith in the Bible, or supposedly the definition. Let's talk about that. When Clint and I went to Alaska last week, we had good evidence that the plane was safe, that the pilots were trained, that ATC was going to get us there safely. But we didn't really trust in all that data until we got on the plane, right? You can know something's true and not trust in it. You you know these chairs. Oh, uh, see. Run. So, uh, see, this is the other thing they do. They do this thing where it's like faith plus you have to trust in him. You know, you can't just have faith. You can't just believe. Just believe the gospel message. Uh, Christ died for your sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You can't just believe that and believe the promise of eternal life the gospel you know you, you can't believe that you just have to you have to like trust in jesus trust in him trust him completely the way you trust a plane when you get on a plane it's like you remember you were saying it's like it's like you you believe that the plane will fly and that it's safe but until you get in the plane you haven't really trusted it yet, you know? And this is how they do it, man. This is how they get you to think that you have to do some weird thing like that in order to have saving faith in Jesus, you know? This is what they always do. But, look, the Bible says believe. It doesn't say all this stuff, believe and trust. And this pistuo, the word is pistuo. Sometimes it's translated as trust. That's true. But mostly it's translated as believe. And in all those, like, salvation verses like john six forty seven and stuff like that it's believe okay it's not trust trust is different than believe clearly right so i don't like this stuff this stuff is just confusing it confuses the issue the bible says believe it doesn't say trust you know and so when people say trust trust in him or whatever it's like well what does that even mean again it's like a, another confusing weird thing that nobody knows what you're talking about okay i just have to believe these things i have to believe that christ died for my sins and that he rose from the dead 
by the power of God and that he's going to save me. He's going to he's, he's going to save me because I believed in him. Right? I have to, I have to believe that stuff and then I'm saved. Okay? But with this thing it's like you have to trust him. You have to trust him the way you would trust it a chair. When you sit in the chair, you trust the chair is going to hold you up. That's how you have to trust Jesus. Well, what? How do I I don't like what are you talking about, you know? And the other thing is, like, when you have a chair in front of you, right, then you can see it. It's a chair. You can see a chair. So you sit in it. And you're like, okay, well, you know, chairs are generally pretty safe. So you don't have, you know, it's like, okay, so you just sit in it. That's what, because you can see it. It's right there. You can see it. You can touch it. You can see if it's wobbly. You can kind of check, right? But if it's a, if it's like some story you heard about a guy who died on a cross 2000 years ago, how are you supposed to trust that the way you trust a chair that you're actually literally sitting in? It's not the same thing at all. So these people that say this thing, it's just confusion. Don't listen to it. Okay. The Bible says believe. It doesn't say trust. It doesn't say trust it like a chair or complete trust or anything like that. Okay. It says believe, believe the gospel. That's all it says. You were trusting that they would. You didn't even think about it when you sat down, but you had faith when you sat down. It's something's what? true and not trust in it. You, you know these chairs. We didn't really trust in all that data until we got on the plane, right? You can know something's true and not trust in it. You, you know these chairs are going to hold you up. You were trusting that they would. You didn't even think about it when you sat down, but... You had faith when you sat down. It's good. There's good evidence these chairs are going to hold us up, despite the fact that I just gained a few pounds, right? These, they're going to hold us up. So faith is trusting in what you have good evidence to believe. So if that's faith, to read. Yeah, like, I don't think that that's the ev ev uh, definition of faith that we get in the Bible. Okay, And, I, and I'll show you something that people often say. Reason is to be rational. So what would be the opposite of reason? Would it be faith? To reason is to be rational. So what's the opposite of reason? Yes, the opposite of reason is irrationality. It's not faith. And to have faith is to trust. So the opposite of faith is to, it's to distrust. To have right? Faith is to trust. Maybe. So faith is to trust. Okay, I guess maybe that's true. I don't know. Like, so then, then the, now you're just saying if if to have faith is to trust, then now it's like you have. It's basically they're the same thing, right? So, I mean, again, that's not. That's not what um what believe is. Believe and again, the Bible says believe. It doesn't say trust or yeah, it says faith, you know, but so but I don't know. I think faith and believe are the same thing. I don't think faith and trust are the same thing. But maybe, I don't know. Let's see. I guess I guess like okay, well let's look at the um Let's look at the definition in in the Bible. Maybe he is right in a way, you know, because it's weird. Like, actually, in the Bible, it says that uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So maybe that's somewhat true. What do you say? Uh, let's see. Okay, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things is okay, okay, okay. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, people look at this one, 11, Hebrews 11, 1, and say that this is the definition of faith. 
The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I don't think that I don't think what he's trying to do here is define faith. Um because I think what he's actually trying to he's trying to describe faith. He's trying to give some features of faith. He's just he's discussing some features of faith. Like it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So for by the elders obtained a good report because they obtained their good reports by faith because they had this hope and then the, then the things that they did because of their hope um that was what got them the good reports you know and then he goes through all these stories of different people different bible characters and their heroic faith Okay, that's by that's what he's saying by by the elders obtained a good report. So by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. So so because Abel had faith, he offered God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, because he had faith and Cain didn't have faith. That's what that's what that implies, right? And then that that because of that thing that he did due to his faith. He um, obtained a good report. Well, I think this is actually the thing that kind of defines faith, you know. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that d diligently seek him. So that that to me is a more of a of a kind of definition or just a concrete description that we can actually do something with in our life. You know, without faith, it is impossible to please him. And then it tells you how to please him. So so you need you need faith to please him, and then it's telling you what how the faith how that kind of works and then he's like he that cometh to god cometh to god is like believe in god or you know or whatever it's it's like to come to the salvation you know you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him Or maybe this is just to please God kind of faith, not to not for salvation. But anyway, it's very similar. But this is the kind of faith that pleases God, not the faith for salvation. So maybe this is a little bit different. But one thing is true here that the faith that they're talking about here in 11.6 is we must believe that God is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then when you do, when you believe those things, you have the kind of first prerequisite for pleasing God. You know, just, just believing that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That in itself is not going to please him. But it's the first kind of stage, you know? And that's what he's calling faith. That's what he's saying, because you need faith to please him. You, you don't, you're not going to please him just by having faith. I mean, again, we're not talking about salvation here. We're just talking about other things like the Christian life. Okay, but just what he's saying is that you can't please him without faith. And then he's saying that... In order to please him, you must believe that he is and be a, and believe that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So it's the, it's this belief thing again. It's believe, you know, believe. That's what faith is. Believe. And so, yeah, that's and it's very simple, man. Faith is belief. Belief. A belief is faith. They're synonymous. They define each other. They are the same thing. Yeah? 
you in order to please god you must you must you must have faith you must have faith to please god now what is that you must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of that those only things so it's about believing believing okay so anyway i don't know i hope that helped you guys maybe this is kind of a dumb video but i thought it was interesting that he keep throwing up the hand signs you know so i thought that was just weird and then the whole way he's talking about like faith and stuff is just it's just getting me annoyed so i thought okay let me make a video about this thing so anyway i hope i hope that helped you or i hope that was that video was helpful to you and uh like i say uh if you like i always say if you guys have any questions or comments please put them in the uh, in the comment section and you know if you think that video is dumb let me know if you, if you liked it let me know or whatever okay like and subscribe if you if you appreciate the content and thank you for watching toronto bible study Hallelujah.